Hey guys! So today I'm going to be talking about creativity, which you can thank YouTube for... I have to quote my password. <laughs> you can thank YouTuber Mio Akiyama for this video because they commented. I have a passion for art and drawing in this sort, but I'm not the most creative. This makes me feel like I'm not meant to go into art design school or animation school. Can you give me any advice on this? So. The thing with creativity is that one, it's an enormous topic that I cannot shove in a nice bite-sized 10 minute YouTube video, so I'm going to do my best here. And two, <laughs> um, artists get such a rep for like being super creative individuals, like who are constantly coming up with really cool ideas and like you can just count on them to come up with something creative. But the problem is, <laughs> creative creativity isn't like a bubbling stream, it's really more of a well. And sometimes that well dries up and then they expect us to go to that well and get more water and it's like, bitch, there's no more water. I'm completely dry. <laughs> so what do you do when the well is low or just completely flat out empty? Maybe you're in an artist block or maybe you're not in an artist block. Maybe you're just like making artwork but you're not super happy with it and you're like, this could be better because I feel like I'm just kind of stuck and I don't know what to do. Here are some, here are some tips for you guys. One thing I found is you need to have lots of sources for inspiration and you cannot re rely heavily on other artists. What I find is that when I get really obsessed with a single artist, I'll like look at their stuff for like hours and hours and I'll you know keep this up for days at a time. But then when it's my turn to draw something, my creativity just plummets. Like I have no idea what they have to do because all I can think of is their amazing artwork and I want my artwork to be like their artwork. So then either I start to kind of copy them too much and I realize I'm copying and that's not good, or I have I don't know what to draw because I'm not them, and I can't think of their own like, like something that they would do. So then I get even more stuck, and then when I feel stuck, I go back to them for inspiration, and then I go back to drawing, and then I don't have any inspiration because I'm stuck. It's this horrible like cycle. So <laughs> what you need to do is stop relying on them. Just you know keep them in your peripheral, but keep like other things as your main go-to source. So for example, like. My big, some of my inspirations are like really weird named stores that you just see like on the side of the room and you're like, what the hell is that thing? Or like really weird little objects that you find in like thrift stores or like uniquely packaged goods. Like I have a whole bunch of different like places that I kind of go to that aren't other artists. I try not to look to other artists as my inspiration because I know it just gets me stuck so it's not worth it to me. Not saying that I don't look to other artists, but I just don't go to them for my inspiration. Not entirely. Another thing is uh, combining ideas. Taking two like almost polar opposites and combining them to see what you get. So for example, steampunk mermaids or desert angels. That right there has like a whole bunch of ideas for myself and you can combine like a whole bunch of different things. I have a video how to defeat artist block, which I'm going to show whole fully up here on how to like combine ideas to make more new ideas. But that's just a really simple one. Just take different things, combine them, and see what the hell you get. Another thing is to avoid cliches if at all possible. For example, doing like all 12 zodiacs. A lot of people have done that. And there's nothing wrong with it because, you know, it's fun. It's like a thing that you can do and it's really like satisfying to get all 12 done or whatever. Like, nothing wrong with it. At the same time, it's very discouraging when you're trying to do something that's a cliche because you'll look at all the other artists who have done the exact same thing. And you'll think like, oh, it's not as good as this person's, or oh, this person's really someone of mine, or I'm really someone of theirs, and it just gets you down, and you don't feel too good. If you are going to do a cliche, try to make it as like different and unique as physically possible. For example, when I was in high school, I did this series called Dr. Dorothy and the Copper Companion, which is really, really loosely based off of um, The Wizard of Oz, because the main character's name is Dorothy, and her companion, the copper companion, is missing a heart. But that's literally it. There's no yellow brick road. My Dorothy is an engineer. The copper companion is a complete robot who doesn't even have a soul. I can't really even talk. Has a completely unique design. It's a set in a steampunk futuristic world. Like, it's completely different other than just this tiny little bit of inspiration that I used in the beginning. So. If you're going to go that route, try to do something completely unique and out of the way different. And then the last thing you can do is try to give yourself a limitation. If you're given like a really, really vague assignment, like draw a city, and you're kind of overwhelmed because there's too many ideas, give yourself some small limitation on that project, like 
make the color palette strictly purple. That will help you so much and you'll be able to figure out what you want to do a lot quicker because you've set that limit. So some last things before I go, don't, try not to think like you have to be the most creative artist in the world to be successful or that you have to be insanely creative just to be an artist because the thing is every single piece of art out there came from something as some sort of inspiration like there's nothing new it's it's not gonna happen so don't think to yourself that you have to be because you're never gonna reach that so don't beat yourself up and just like one other thing creativity doesn't have to be like the subject matter doesn't have to be creative. It can be another element of your art that's creative that makes you a creative artist. Because people tend to think that artists have to be like really unique in like storylines and character design and landscapes and creatures, like that they can just kind of create these worlds, right? But in a lot of cases, there's a lot of artists out there that their subject matter isn't like the most creative thing in the world, but something else what they do is really creative. So for example, Will Terrell here on YouTube, He's a really awesome artist that I love and he's really famous for his people sketching videos and like they're just people that he sees at the grocery store or like out and about in town so the subject matter isn't really creative but the way he draws them and how unique he is able to like stylize their bodies is really really creative so yeah you don't have to be don't beat yourself over up over this stuff just keep pushing through it it might just be like a block or something like that everything ends at some point and you're probably more creative than you think. I hope Neo, right? Yeah, I hope this answered your, answered your question. I'm sorry this took so long to get to you. <laughs> and I hope this helps any of you guys watching this who are kind of like struggling or kind of beating yourself up because you're not as creative as you want to be. Laura knows that it's happened to me so many times. So you're not alone. <laughs> You could point out to that silly YouTuber and be like, well, she's like me, so, so I'm okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I hope this was sort of helpful. Before I go, just like little announcement thingies. My Snapchat is up and running. You can add me by username. It's Bianca Boba. Or if you really, really want to get my snap code, just go to my previous video, August announcements, and the snap code comes up like within the first minute of the video. You can find it. I would highly recommend that you follow me because if you've been like interested about my 100 storefront idea, this is the place where you can get like really, really in advance sneak peeks of what I'm doing. Like right now, I've already shown my users uh, number 10 and I've only posted number one on Instagram. So you might want to follow that. Speaking of Instagram, you can see my artwork on Instagram and Tumblr. It's beyond over for each one of them. Links in the description. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any like major concerns or questions that you want me to do a video on in the future, you can always leave a comment in the description. Please give this video a like if you liked it. And if you really like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. That would mean so much. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!